Today is January 3rd. Judge is the captain. It's the new year. It's the new Yanks. It's the New York Yankees. And we're going to talk all about it. Let's talk Yanks. Hello and welcome to Talking Yanks. Thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Jimmy. His name is Jake, producer BBD, in the box. And mm. it's the first episode of the year 2023. 2022 officially gone, Jake. You know, we like to do baseball season years and say, well, that's in our rear view. And now it's gone. And this is the year the Yanks win the World Series. Woohoo! Wow! We're here. How are you? James, Davis, everyone. Happy New Year. How about it? Hope your diet's going well. Not. Um, I, I hope people's diets is going. Unless, unless it's a harm. One, unless you're it's... happy to bail already, then I'm happy for you. Or if it's a bad diet. Like bad bugs diet. Only. Eating, hel- un- eating an unhealthy diet. Morgan Spark. I'm doing all right. Uh, excited to get into it with everyone. I mean, we even we did talk in baseball the other day and yucking it up just about some ball. I mean, we're I'll be honest, we're in the weird window, right? We're we're hoping for one more big trade. The Yankees had a bunch of eensy teensy tiny signings that are they safety signings? Yes, but what does it mean? Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, February spring training sneaks up on you. Sneaks up on you. Uh, but, yeah, we're, we're kind of in a holding pattern. What else will the Yankees do? Will the will we get, you know, remember how blindsided we were by Donaldson IKF trade and how good that was for the team? Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm interested to find out. And before you know it, man, I mean, big year all around. I'm, I'm getting hitched. And, like, that's right at the start, like, the fun part of spring training. So I'm going to, like, wake up, and it's going to be baseball season. So wake up. Wake up! Grab brush for a little makeup. What were you? What are you looking at? I was look, thinking you looked away from everything. I was looking at Mike over there, yeah. thinking he probably maybe liked that song at one point. And then also, I was thinking that we said judge name captain, and that's got to be the main conversation because I was ready to go to what you were talking about. Right. But we should talk about judge being the captain first. It's official. We thought it would happen. We haven't done a show since. It happened. We had our interviews, and and those are fun. Swisher was a ball of energy. People seem to enjoy that. But at the press conference, they confirmed what everyone knew would happen. Judge is the 16th captain in Yankees franchise history. The shop, .johnboymedia.com, made some, to Mm. to steal Jake, you said this word recently, dope shirts. You tweeted out the word dope. I thought that was dope of you. Uh, They are cool shirts. All the captains for the New York team. Um, this is the first time, like, I don't remember when Jeter was named captain. I do remember when Jeter was named captain, but that was what, 2003. I was in middle school. I was, I, I had just moved back to the East coast. So I was never like on that grind of everyday watching because I would live in Illinois. So this is a a cool one for us in adult years. It's like every time something happens in Yankees world that my little kid eyes saw as like Santa Claus, like Jeter as captain. I was like Santa Claus to me was like awesome and a role model and all that now it's still holds weight it's still really cool and the fact that it was unofficial but now it's official like it, it means something while no, meaning nothing at all like if a lot of people listen to the show that aren't yankees fans but you still tune in i appreciate you guys thank you uh this means nothing to you what we're gonna say is gonna sound like fairy tale yankee land gaga stuff which it is but i love it and it, it's the fanfare that we buy into, and it does mean a lot. It means that you can't lose it. Like, people call Jeter captain for life. I call my captain for my high school team captain still. And it's going to be on his plaque. If he gets a plaque, he's basically got a plaque now. You don't, has any captain not had a plaque? Probably some of the old ones. Does Willie Randolph have a plaque? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's they love him a lot. So they love moms love Willie Randolph. Kind of the Andy Pettit thing. Um, no, man. It's let's let's peel back the layers to this glass onion, Jim. Stop talking about that movie. Um, so there's the Yankees lore of it, right? Like to to be a Yankees captain is a thing. Like wh- whether you're listening to this and you're not a Yankees fan and you're kind of rolling your eyes at us. If you're a Yankees fan. He does have a plaque, Willie. There you go. Um, Being the Yankees captain, and it's funny that now we live in, um, you know, we've been covering this since, you know, Aaron Judge's Monster 2017 season. And, you know, he he broke out and he was a stud and it was incredible. And then you start fast forward and he had a couple weird injuries and then you're doing like a career timeline stuff that... We eventually hit that point in, like, 2019 where it was, uh, how good is Judge? When is he going to hit free agency? And how old is he going to be? And that became a part of his free agency, right? Like, he's been the Yankees captain since 2019. Um, and m- mentally and everything they... I think 2018. I think as soon as he had that rookie season... Although CC and Gardner were there, so it was maybe like a little like uh, passing of the torch, like captain. T- they were it was like, like clear he was captain next. in waiting. In they were kind of guiding him and seeing if 2017 was real, yeah, and it kind of was. So that that's where I jumped there. Um, and then it became you know the Yankees is going to be a part of the contract, right? Like if if you're in, then you'll get the captaincy, or if you you go to San Fran, maybe they'll name you captain. We don't care. Um, but no, I mean uh, Jeter's. Documentary that came out was titled "The Captain," right? Am I yes. dreaming that? You're um, not. You're not. Uh, you know, I, Judge is probably going to have a commercial in the next twenty years where he's wearing like a captain's hat. Um, it's a big deal for Yankee <laughs> fans, and it's like it's it's a bigger deal. And uh, I'll go down the sports part of it because I'm I'm a sports junkie, and you know, Nestor's been everywhere the past couple weeks. He was at every sporting event he could attend. Um, and you know we we had some sad news in the sporting world last night with Demar Hamlin. Is that is that still goes on? But these guys, like, whenever you hear a player get interviewed, what do they say? They they miss. I think Swisher even said it in our interview. Like, you miss the trips, you you miss the bus rides, and we miss that. You you mentioned your old hockey captain. You still call him captain. I if I if I link up with some some dudes from our you know. JV baseball team, we tell the same stories over and over because you, you remember that time that they were screwing around and you hid something in the bubble gum and, and something happened. These guys are still living that out. Like, they grow up and they have, like, really cool lives and cars and, and cool homes and stuff like that, but they're still on the road with them. And they, for, what is baseball now? February through October, if you're doing it right? That's, what, eight months? Yeah, uh, math pod. Um, that these guys are still living that out. And they look at Judge as the captain, as the captain that you kind of looked at on your sports team. Sure, some stuff changes. Yeah. Um, you know, Judge Same is, way kid Elberfeld was looked at. Judge isn't demanding wind sprints after a bad loss, but, like, he's uh, he's been the dude. He faces the media. Um, and he's, I mean... I can't afford to do him, though. What's that? Oh, I can't if we do the sprints. Yeah. He's, Judge, you need me to do those sprints? Never said anything about sprints. Oh, no, man. We're good. Just trying to get better. And we appreciate that. Who's your least favorite captain in Yankees history? Oh, let's rank the Yankee captains. Uh, now, no, for no. people that don't know, once Lou Gehrig died, it became much more like of an honor. Before Lou Gehrig, I think they just always had a captain, and there was a lot of 1800s, early 1900s there, captains. Well, there was a period in baseball where it was like where it was had, like foreign sports that are like yeah. the captain's one that makes the pitch. You needed a captain to, to make, make the make decisions on the field. And, and then and then that Thurman became captain once Gehrig. After Gehrig, there was a long gap, so no one's going to have it. And then they said, well, if anyone's going to have it, it's Thurman. And that kind of opened it back up. And then they were trying to just, like, have one. Like, it seems like it should have went Thurman to Mattingly, and that's kind of how we picture it in our brains. But they were searching. They got Nettles, Randolph, Gidry, who are good Yankees and good leaders. But but uh, can I tell you a little bit about Kid Eberfeld? Yeah. Because the second Yankee captain. Second Yankee captain, Kid El- El- Elberfeld. I mean, 
This is how his bio opens. Kid Elberfeld called the dirtiest, scrappiest, most te- most pestiferous, most rankankerous, most rambunctious ball player that ever stood on spikes. For his vicious arguments on the diamond, patterned his combative style after that of his favorite team, the Baltimore Orioles of the mid-1890s. He grew up loving that team. He believed that an umpire should be kept in his place. And now what happened behind an arbiter's back was none of his business. But when he did keep his volatile temper in check, he was a hell of a ball player. So that's Captain Kid Elberfeld. And he's my favorite Yankee captain of all time. Kid Elberfeld is your 1-1 Yankee captain. Uh, Though he only stood at 5'7", 158, Mm. fearless turning double play. Not surprisingly, he was frequently spiked. So by 1907, he wore a whalebone shin guard Mm. on his leg for protection. This guy sucked. I mean, everyone. Hey. Hated, no, sorry. I, everyone hated this guy. Picture a, a guy Whalebone that Shingar. you hated, and it was Kid Elberfeld. I mean, How did he get captain? He built this franchise. He named himself captain. There's no way around that. I'm the captain of this ball club. Yeah, but it was, it was kind of cool when he did it. Yeah, I guess so. I am the captain. Um, happy for Judgy. It's nice, right? It's nice. He did say in his press conference that he was, like, shocked. He had some dumb quote. Judge, love you. Come on the show. Subscribe. Like, rate, review. Thanks, Judge. Appreciate that. Imagine. Wow. I'm happy his wife Sam will be back, my friend. Yes. Close friend. Yes. But he said, like, I was just stunned when Hal said it. And it's like, no, you. No. You had to know. He does a lot of that in the interview. I mean, that was... That was so That's funny when game. it was happening. Yeah. I hope now that he has the long contract and captaincy, some of this like faux humbleness yeah. kind of gets washed away. Because he's humble and gracious, but he goes one step too far where I'm like, now you're just lying to everyone. You right. were not stunned. He does it just, just to sweep it under the rug yeah. and keep it moving, which he'll, he'll probably keep doing because I think he likes that and I think the Yankees like that. Um, but yeah, the, you know, Hilarious 30 minutes in the office. Yes is doing the uh, the announcement uh, ceremony. And, uh, you know, people, are they going are they doing are they going to name him right now? Are they doing it now? And it's like, uh, Jeter, they save it if it's spring training. I don't know. Jeter and Randolph are here, which that feels odd <laughs> for a normal signing. <laughs> yeah, he's he's the captain now. He's the captain now. You seen that? I seen that. Captain Phillips. Good movie. Tom Hanks. You love Tom Hanks. Good guy, yeah. He wrote He's me your 1-1. One, one. No. He's my wife's 1-1. One, one. Tom Hanks has a chance to be a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> I'd have to really give it some thought. See? But he does. So the most, uh, the least deserving plaque you were saying. I didn't say those words. I don't think I've said those that sentence in my life. I thought you had it as a toss-up between Allie Reynolds. Don't. And Ed Barrow. Don't. I didn't realize... We, I mean, they take Ed Barrow's plaque away from Monument Park. Do they lose any ticket sales? That's not how it should be measured, Jim. Cashman's keeping that around. How can you know GM. where you're going if you forget where you're from? Judge is the eighth Yankees captain since 1926. That's kind of cool, man. The amount of people... How many people have been on Earth since 1926? We hit the 8 billion mark the other day. You see that? I mean, but they're not even counting everyone in Appalachia. Yeah. Yeah, it's just how many total people are currently present. Have come through. A lot. I can't figure it out. Okay. You've stumped stumped me. Someone run the numbers on that. Leave it in the comments below. I mean, Ed Barrow. What the fuck? Okay. No, Ed Barrow probably needed some athletic greens. Well, he did because his nickname to his friends was Uncle Egbert, which is the nickname of an unhealthy. That's man. an unhealthy. Nickname. That's an unhealthy guy. You got an Uncle Egg. Yeah, Egbert E G B E R T. This guy could use some athletic greens. Mm. Then his plaque maybe would be deserved. So what is this stuff? Ed Barrow's daughter, who's ninety-eight. Daughter's daughter. Who's listening. 
Yeah. What is this stuff? He would have had deserved his plaque if he had it. Yeah. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, and probiotics to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, your focus, and your aging. Something that did catch up to Ed, died at 85. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything. While it's still tasting good. It costs you less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. Yeah, shit. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash yanks. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash yanks. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. <laughs> Speaking about pickups, mm. the Yankees picked some guys up and then they said goodbye to some guys. Mm. Let's say goodbye to Litke first. Yeah, it's deserved. I mean... Now, everybody knows Litke wasn't out there in save opportunities. Well, he wasn't. Uh, two saves last year. Yeah, but he wasn't, you know, not a celebrated holds guy. If mm-hmm. you're, But they gave him a role on the team, and for two years, he pitched really well in that role, and his role was kind of changing last year. Like, at some points, he was a three-inning guy. Yeah. Lukewarm Litke, he liked, loved lukewarm situations uh for pressure was that it was yeah yeah didn't want you didn't want him in the highest leverage spots, medium but his leverage. numbers were were kind of bad if you threw him out there when nothing mattered. medium leverage yeah. Like, yeah there's some jerk fans that are like this guy doesn't deserve a goodbye a three to four and run to, game and lucas lick to those i say mariano boo those guys this guy deserves a goodbye he's out of the out of mlb for 2016 2017 2018 2019 those four years Again, 2020. And 2020, right? yeah. He's got five years. But the Yankees had their eye on him that whole time. Yeah. And rightfully so, because he came in. Yankees had a Google sheet called uh, Minor League Spin Rate, and then they just clicked sort by top, and Licky was the up guy. there, and they're like, top I've got fil- our eye on this guy. Out the guys, unavailable. Yeah. Him. Yeah, player 73 out of Seattle's system. Uh, 107 games. That's a lot. It is. I tweeted out his stats. It was a 107 at like a 270 ERA. 271 ERA. Over two years, yeah. 31 yeah. games finished. It's nice. It means nothing. It's nice. Um, but no, I mean, 129 innings to the tune of a 138 uh, strikeout. So more than a strikeout per inning. He basically gave you like an amazing starting pitcher season uh, out of the bullpen for two years. So no, Licky was incredible. He, he did fill the role. Uh, Perfectly, we were wondering if he was going to survive at some point. And I, I think the the better news for him, because I think we all you all you always have a Yankee snob moment where it's like, oh, Lucas Lickie, uh, they DFA him. Is is he going to end up in Cincinnati? Is he going to end up with the Rockies? Like, where's where's Lickie going to end up? He's going to the Atlanta Braves, who won a World Series recently, and they're still really good. So. Good for Lucas Litke. Um, yeah, best of luck. And he was, uh, you know, to be selfish for a second, he mixed it up with talking Yanks, and whenever we saw him, he gave uh, yes. how you guys doing and stuff. He nodded. And I think, let's be honest. Didn't we make a joke about Cole together? Maybe. When we were in the dugout? Um, yeah, he laughed about something. I know our social team had a lot of fun that he was childhood friends with Emmanuel Sanders. And yes. that was cool. Um, and let's be real honest for a second. There were some funny images where the Yankees showed up at like a Nets game and Licky's kind of bald head stuck out a little bit. Firefighter mustache. Look, just and the looks kind of different look. from everyone else. Did they have a whole firefighter phase? Was that this year? Yeah, it was Matt Carpenter, Litke. Was um, he the only true firefighter? No. And Canely was a Greg cop? Greg Weissert, Weissert was a cop. Weissert. Yeah. Dirty he cop. took over the mic. For no, the cop. no, he's just he, trying to be a dirty, trying cop. to be a dirty cop. And they're like, dude, he'd love this to is be not, involved in one like, you're scandal. not, you're not cut out for this. Why, sir? Like you have a great wife <laughs> and a good life. This is like, stay away. Why, sir? You're not a dirty cop. He's giving him the speech from Barry. Don't come on this. Yeah. He rubbed his 
hands. You know, it. I watched Barry all three seasons. Yeah, I nice. watched season three. Still haven't. It's a good nice. show. Um, good. Only one player spent every day on the active roster the last two full seasons. COVID helped, but it was Lucas Lickey. No COVID absences, no IL stints, no options. I mean, he played through some... Sh- we should get Lickie on here and say, what did you play through? Because he was so scared of going on the IL. Couldn't. And then being out of league. Couldn't. Like, if he could pitch through it, he had to. Should I DM him right now? Yeah. Dude, you but must have pitched through some shit. <laughs> what nah. was your worst injury the past two years? He just could. Does he follow like me? Good. Is he going to grow a beard? I'll message him. Probably. Yeah, probably. That's Sad good. to see you go. Addition, like not love not for nothing, but for. Are you gonna grow a beard? For a guy who, uh, you know, they they DFA'd him and traded him. They got a lot for that kind of trade. Two prospects one from the them, Braves. Yeah, one of them's a top thirty guy. Which, you know, in the twenty range, but maybe they're stars. for for that kind of move. That's good value. You got something. Oh, yeah, okay, hard hitting jur- hard hitting journalism from me. I'm DMing him saying, "Sad to see you go." One, are you going to grow a beard or mustache li- life? You know, or has right. mustache life stuck? Done. Two. Okay. Only player to never to stay on the active roster last two seasons. Last two full years. How many injuries did you pitch through? Thank you, Lucas. I think while we're on facial hair, we should mention quickly, Rodon did his presser the next day, and he looked, he looked fantastic. He um, did. People were worried about that. People I was were, worried. I, I was, I was worried. jarred at first just because he's been so such a beard guy. Um, and I, and because once, I, once I warmed up to it, I was like, yeah, this does looked, look really good. It looked like he had a big face, so you're kind of wondering how that was going to land, but it looked good. He looked like a jock. I like he when, he, like was, a star when he was talking to, uh, was it Curry or Ruko? Curry? Curry, About I his, think. like, pitch arsenal. Yeah. Arsenal. Rush pitch arsenal. I sound like Ed Barrow, that loser. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I don't know what he sounded like. Probably that, to be honest. Um, and Rodon said something. He was like, yeah, well, I... Started to feature the curveball more, a little bit of this. The ch- I don't want to give away my secrets, and he stopped himself. It was a very uh, honest, earnest moment of like talking to Jack and being like, "Hey, hey, hey!" Like, wait, I'm giving you give a away lot of all my stuff. And I think we I still like the change up. I'll mix it in. I think we told you guys uh, probably when it broke, and maybe after um, <laughs> the uh, the Cespit is BBQ guys who we're friendly with. Um, they're very tight uh, with Rodon, um, and. They were like, he's he's a dude. He's like a guy that happens to be a really good pitcher. Uh, I think he's going to feed off the Yankee Stadium emotions. He loves showing emotion. And he's like, he's real. Like, I, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't think it's a ruffle feathers non-Yankee way, but I don't think he's your traditional kind of Yankees guy. Um, Him and Nest are going to get along. Yeah. So, do you think he's going to start a campaign to prank Cole? Oh, because him and Cole. Gar- Gardner pranked Cole and Cole didn't like it. No, I think it's going to be like a Cole's fascinated by him. <gasps> you don't think that like, maybe I think, Rodon's like hey, Nest why don't we blah 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 blah? Nest, ooh, 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 no, I no. think Cole looks at him like a science experiment. Nestor's like, well, no, we do that shit to Blake. We do that yeah, to, we do that to no, Matt Blake. Blake. Matt Blake, yeah. that's our guy. That's our prank guy. College of the Holy Cross, that's where Matt Blake went. Hmm. Stats. Yeah. Data. They also all right. So the Yankees. Are we saying goodbye to anyone else? Tyone. We did that. Uh, I'm looking at the list. Ben Intendi's not thing. coming back. He went to Chicago. I think we talked about that a little. Yeah, we did talk All about right. that one. So let's uh, say hello. Willie Calhoun. The Yankees mm. are just shoring up left field. They got fallback options for days. Mm. Calhoun had uh, some good years. He teammates with... Uh, Trevor Plouffe. I was going to say Cole. 
No, he went to ASU, not UCLA. Sorry, get confused. Okay. Um, uh, teammates with Verdon for a little last year. Giants. Giants, like three games. I mean, minor league signing, right? Yeah, Even, minor league deal. It's not camp in fight. It's minor league deal. I mean, with a... There's with probably a an opt-out. But, well, there's a chance he's playing in AAA for the Yankees. Correct. Yes, right, yeah. It's yeah, a minor yeah. league deal with the major league invite because all of those have that. If you want the story, uh, little guy listed 5'8". I think he might be oh. more in my stratosphere. I've been thinking of Cole Calhoun. Okay, huge. Willie Calhoun. Willie Calhoun. Um, came up, was a bit of a prospect. Um, had some... Had some serious hitting numbers at, at 2018, the number 36 prospect in baseball, Willie Calhoun. Uh, he came up in 2019, the year the balls were a little juicy loosey, uh, and he hit a lot. Um, you know, he kind of looked like a foundational piece for Texas. He had an 848 OPS, 21 homers in 83 games. Again, looking back at that 2019 season, uh, Mike Talkman, Cameron Mabin, there's a little bit of funny business going on. Uh, his numbers since then haven't been as good. He had some injury stuff. Ended up uh, San Francisco for a cup of coffee last year after finishing with Texas. He hasn't hit in a little bit. He has some exit velo numbers from past years. There's a little bit of that Yankees formula that got us excited in 2018, 2019, 2020. Uh, those were kind of the Marcus Timms years. Don't know how much credit he deserved, and he said his whole philosophy was swing harder. Yeah. Which we were a little skeptical of, but it was working for a yeah. little bit. Um, I don't know. Basically uh, the same as uh, the dying wife in Signs. Swing away. That's the big thing, Signs. How he kills the aliens, right? Well, a lot of people think they're actually demons, Spoilers. Maybe aliens are demons. What's his name in that movie? Swing Away Julius. I feel like it's some dumb name. Joaquin Phoenix. Yep. Playing the role of Julian Love. Merrill. 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 Oh, this guy's a baseball player. What should we name him? Merrill. Yeah, kind of works. Stomp. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Probably not... Not something to get too jazzy on unless he has a big spring training and the Yankees don't do anything else in left field. But he's okay. former MLB guy that'll be with the Yanks. Are you going to get... Had some prospect shine not, not too long ago. Are you going to get jazzed about Art Warren? I always get jazzed about Art Warren, but that's a personal thing. Okay. That I'd rather not talk about. Okay. So... Billy uh, McKinney also back. You yeah, saw that. It's huge. Huge. Huge for spring training. Grand Spring training Grand Slam 2018. Mm. That was a big one. Yeah. Way to be, Billy McKinney. Traded him to Toronto? Or did that where he just took off? Uh, I believe. Didn't he get traded? He's been I everywhere, he man. Was, uh, yeah, he's been everywhere. Like, did they trade him for McBroom? He was in the Jay Happ trade with Brandon Drury. <clears throat> That's how the Yankees acquired Jay Happ. They Acquired him in the first place in the Chapman deal. Been part of some trades with some guys. He has yeah. been traded one, two, three, four, five times. Billy McKinney. Ooh. So well, he 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 came over from the Cubs in the Chapman. That's what he did. and then mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> left in the Hap. Before and then, that, he was in another trade with a lot of MLB guys from A's to Cubs. He's played on six MLB teams, which I. I think at this point that means teams like him. Uh, yeah, or just they don't want to start the clock on another guy. Who knows? But that was a fun name to see back. Ryan Weber. I decided I'm uh, a big Weber guy this year. You're a Weber stand I've this year. I completely. Nice. Um, he won me over big time. Yeah. I want to see him throw a blitz ball. I think he's nasty. Oh, yeah. He's gross. Yep. I like Ryan Weber. Right. I think he's bought into this role pretty good because he keeps he doing care. it. Care. Yeah. Oh. He's from St. Pete. Oh, okay. Weber. So for him, it's just like a spring training convenience relationship to be with the Yankees. So they still need Certainly to go get a left fielder. And do are they gonna try and get a lefty in the bullpen with Litke gone? They only have one lefty in the bullpen in Wandy well, Peralta. Essentially, Canley's their Canely lefty guy, and and Marinaccio if he's if he's yeah. around, he's got the Canley. 
got a little bit of that. So, but will they go after a guy who throws with their with a left hand? Maybe. I I would still like Albert Abreu and Domingo Herman. Not like um, it would have to make sense. They have to replace them with arms in the bullpen. But Albert Abreu and Domingo Herman have zero options. And if they break camp with the cl- with the team and are on the 26-man roster in the bullpen with zero options, we know how the Yankees operate. They're handcuffed until a trade deadline or DFA if they're like, it, it, all the way in August. They won't DFA them until it's like what they have to do. Yeah. So if they can make some sort of move. But Herman actually, his skill set is valuable. Albert Abreu, I don't, I don't think, although they've DFA'd him twice already, so I guess they don't mind. But I looking at bullpen guys when they don't have options, it's like these guys can just trap you. Yeah, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be surprised? And maybe if if they do trade for a left fielder, if it's a left fielder and a reliever or something like that, a guy with options who could go up and down, they move uh, someone off the forty man in that move. I know you've been pushing for the Yankees to sign free agent Justin Wilson. Uh, we'll see if that happens. No, bless him for everything he did. Back in 20... Bless him? 2015? The first time. Yeah, I think 15 was the deal. Yeah, bless him. Yeah, cur- currently, we, and the Yankees were in a similar position to it last year, and we'll probably deep dive this more on future episodes, but the only optionable relievers, Loisaga, not going to happen. Trevino, not going to happen. Marinaccio might happen. Hmm. I have something to say. Say it. Let it out. Where's Luis Sessa? I think he's a red starting pitcher. <laughs> I think I saw him on their roster resource one of uh, one of these recent days. So, is he uh, there? He's like part of their. Oh my god, he's got two years left. Yeah, he's uh, he's a foundational he's piece to their the Reds. three starter. No, and he's happy. Good for him. He's happy. I thought maybe he was still in their bullpen, and this was his last year before Arb. Or maybe he had just hit Arb and was like a free agent out there just kind of waiting for a job. And I was going to say, pick him up as a guy that can go back and forth, get him back in the mix, throw that slider. I like him over Abreu. He's so he, happy. He was the best cockroach the Yanks ever had. Abreu was a bad one. I mean, maybe this is the... Shreve was a bad one. Maybe this is the year that Abreu, Abreu becomes stretches. full cockroach. I you know? hope. That's what I'm we, worried about. We hit... We hit this point with Albert Abreu with Sessa, and then we got proven wrong. And I know. Maybe they're they're trying to cockroach us. They do need a guy with options, though. And I don't think that's Abreu's problem. That's Yeah. Okay, well, anyway, for people that are really confused about what we're saying, uh, Luis Sessa didn't have options for, like, three seasons. Yeah. yeah and we thought, like, this is the year he gets DFA'd, and he, was just a, he just survived and survived and survived like a cockroach. Last guy in that bullpen, spot start if you really needed it. Yeah, like, right now, Marinaccio's got two options, so you're going to use one of those. He'll be up and down. Lou trevino has got two options, but he's a pro. You're not... You use those. You really don't want to do you really that. Don't, you're not going to option. Got two is because he's too good for them. And you, then Luiza has got an option, but you don't want to use that either. So they don't have, they can't have Abreu and Herman, two optionless guys, as the last two in the bullpen. Because what happens then is Marinaccio gets sent down and Abreu gets his spots just like they did last year. Weissert will probably be up and down for the Yankees next year. Um, Optionable. Walking in with soiled hands, like, come on. I can get dirty. We dip these in the kitchen. It feels like, um, and by the way, I don't, I don't know if we want to land here, if we want to save it for next step. Uh, the left field situation, which, you know, has been looming since Rodon, right? Like that was kind of our first thought with Rodon, which was a little rude, but we addressed that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you know, I, I wonder if, if it's a, if Kepler's in play from the Twins. Uh, and is it going to be Kepler and a reliever? Your guy Caleb Tealbar, you know. I really don't like, like Kepler I, as a fit for what the Yankees need. There's some risk. Yeah. Well, there's also like I don't want that style bat. Even even at its best, I don't want that style bat. Right. I think we're, at, uh, on an upcoming episode, we're going to revisit left field. I think. Yeah. So. Uh, something something to look out for because, yeah, that feels pretty Yankees to... That 
when a trade happens, whether it's left field or if it's just for a reliever. The only way I like Kepler is if the Twins and the Yankees just straight up swap IKF and Kepler. I've seen Twins yeah. people saying they'd be okay with it. Need a short stop. And, but now I think the Twins are now like, wait, hold up. Let's see where this Carlos <laughs> Correa shit takes right. us. Come yeah. home, Carlos. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's kind of everything. We got another episode later this week where we will, hopefully there's news to react to. Now nah, we'll do a deep dive into options and shit talk like that. About some or we'll prank call again. Ruko. Maybe we'll apologize to Ed. I don't, I don't see know. That. We'll talk. We'll think about that off air. We'll prank call Ruko and tell him it's the ghost of Ed Yarbrough. Barrow. I was That's rude, Ed, man. I was talking Ed Yarbrough. Oh, you want to do Ed Barrow too? The ghost of Ed Barrow would be scary as shit. And that's the end of the episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you next time. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Oh, Yankees.